A NASA spacecraft is right now hurtling towards Earth and will enter the atmosphere tomorrow, delivering a capsule full of dust from an asteroid which might help us understand how life formed on Earth. For more, let's bring in our US correspondent Alison Petrowski in LA. Morning, Ali. The capsule of dust is going to touch down in the Utah desert. Yeah, that's right. Good morning to you guys. As uh, you just said, we shouldn't be alarmed. This is only a capsule full of dust. It is not the asteroid itself which is heading towards Earth, but this is a mission seven years in the making from NASA, a an asteroid sample return mission. OSIRIS-REx, is, which is what we are looking at, that was its launch back in 2016. It made its way all the way to an asteroid called Bennu, landed on that asteroid, collected up a bunch of dust and rubble in 2020 and is bringing it back to Earth. So tomorrow, OSIRIS-REx will fling this capsule of asteroid dust into the Earth's atmosphere. It will make a fiery descent into the Utah desert, uh, somewhere within a 650 square kilometre area that has been mapped out for it. And information from Bennu will help scientists prepare if an asteroid needs to be deflected in the future. Now, Michelle Thompson is on the research team. She is going to be one of the first humans to study this rubble and put it under the microscope. And she says this is why they picked this particular asteroid. It's close to the Earth as a near-Earth asteroid, and so we're able to get there easily and return samples in a reasonable time frame. The second is that it's what we call a carbonaceous asteroid. That means it, we think it's rich in organic molecules, and those organic molecules could have been around in the earliest days of Earth, and that can give us information about how life evolved on our own planet. Now, it never ceases to amaze me how accurate NASA is at capturing these landings. They say that the capsule will touch down at 8.55 a.m. in the Utah desert local time. That is 12.55 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. And the good news for space nerds is that you can watch it. The stream will start at midnight Australian time and you can watch, hopefully, a very uh, successful end to a mission from NASA. Now, there are many questions about how life on Earth was formed, but tomorrow we may be one step closer to finding the answer. So a NASA spacecraft is right now heading back home carrying some very precious cargo that might hold the answers. For more on this, we're joined by two astrophysicists, Matt Agnew in Melbourne and Dr Sarah Webb in Bendigo. Morning to you both. Uh, Matt, I want to get to you first. The spacecraft is called the Osiris Rex. What answers uh, could it provide to Earth's origins? So Osiris Rex, the key goal was to get this sample from an asteroid. And the special part about asteroids is that they formed very early in the life of the solar system. And so what that means is by looking at this sample of an asteroid, we're seeing an untainted sample of what the early solar system looks like. And that really gives us a lot of insight and information about things like where did the water on Earth come from? Was it during the formation of Earth and in situ? Or was it delivered later from, from collisions? Uh, it also gives us information about the biological origins of things. There may be certain carbon uh, molecules that could be seen as progenitors to life. So there's a lot of potential uh, things that could be in there that are very exciting, but there's also guaranteed a lot of things that are really exciting. Matt, we're told that it's currently speeding towards Earth at the speed of a rifle bullet, which sounds frightening. Um, how and where is this thing going to land? So it's going to land tonight uh, at, at about midnight essentially and it's going to be aiming to target in Utah. They've indicated that the trajectories are all very spot on. No more thrusting and uh, uh, manoeuvres need to be uh, made to guide it down to the final uh, landing point. And to slow it down, like a lot of these aircraft, it will basically get slowed down by the thickness of the Earth's atmosphere. It, as you can see here in this imagery, it, it basically gets burnt up from going through this thick atmosphere and then it will deploy a parachute about a couple of kilometres above the surface that will slow it down the rest of the way for a uh, gentle landing. How big is it, Matt? So it's about half a kilometre in diameter, which puts it at in the range of the Empire State Building. So it's, it's, it's pretty... Sorry, sorry, pardon me. The asteroid is, is half a kilometre. This, this object itself is much smaller. The capsule oh. is... Oh. Uh, yeah, very, very small. Uh, I don't have the exact numbers, but, you know, less than a metre in, in diameter. OK, good to, good to clarify there. Um, Sarah, now you have been covering this mission very closely the last few years in the media. Whenever we hear <laughs> things like this, I, almost, I always think, this must be like Christmas for you. H how remarkable oh. is this? 
It absolutely is. It's an astrophysicist's Christmas. Anytime we oh, get to look at that. pure samples, uh, and and one of them is anytime we can get asteroid return samples. And this one's particularly interesting because Bennu, the asteroid where it's collected from, is one of our most uh, dangerous asteroids in the solar system. We won't scare anyone, but it will have some close encounters in the next couple hundred years. And we want to understand this little guy or big guy uh, before it comes too close to us. So as we celebrate Astrophysicists Christmas, uh, what does this mean for the future of uh, space exploration, Sarah? I think so much. We've seen so many successful missions coming out of NASA and many other space agencies in the last uh, couple decades. And we're just getting better and better at the way that we engineer our spacecraft and the way that we design missions to be return sample missions now. So this is going to be hugely important when we head back to the moon in the Artemis program and then eventually to Mars as well. All of this is the build up for our next frontier of space exploration. Can I ask a very quick, silly question potentially? Can, sure. can we see it? Bennu? Yeah. With our naked eye? Not with your naked eye, but if you've got a telescope big enough and not one that's, you know, a fairly okay telescope, you can certainly see it. I can it's see Matt, Matt like... going, guys, with your naked eye. Are you crazy? <laughs> 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 I was being polite. I was, I was holding, you know, Yeah, well, I had enough, people like us. I had enough problem saying astrophysicist, <laughs> let alone understanding the concept. Anyway, uh, for more Space Insight, Matt's book, Dr Matt's Guide to Life in Space, is out now. Thank you so much for your time and on I Weekend Today. I probably need to read it. Now... <laughs> A NASA space capsule is hurtling towards Earth, carrying stardust from an asteroid in a mission that's taken seven years. For more, let's bring in US correspondent Alison Petrowski in LA. Ali, good morning. The capsule is expected to touch down around midnight tonight. Yeah, that's right. Good morning to you, Sophie. When OSIRIS-REx launched in 2016, it had a pretty simple mission. Uh, bring back a sample from an asteroid. And look, so if all things going to plan, that is what will happen tomorrow. It's been to an asteroid called Bennu. It collected up dust and rubble and other materials, and it is hurtling its way back towards us now. The capsule is scheduled to touch down in the Utah desert tomorrow, somewhere in a 650-kilometre area that has been mapped out. So if information from Bennu will help scientists prepare if an asteroid needs to be deflected in the future, Michelle Thompson is one of the six scientists that will get to go to uh, be hands on with the materials that come back. She'll get to dig through it and put under the microscope. She says this is why her team picked this particular asteroid. It's close to the Earth as a near Earth asteroid, and so we're able to get there easily and return samples in a reasonable time frame. The second is that it's what we call a carbonaceous asteroid. That means it, we think it's rich in organic molecules, and those organic molecules could have been around in the earliest days of Earth, and that can give us information about how life evolved on our own planet. NASA says the capsule will land at 8.55 a.m. Utah time. That is 12.55 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. It will be broadcast live on NASA's YouTube channel. So, so space nerds should prepare themselves for a late one. Yeah, so cool. I'm fascinated by that story. <laughs> Ali, thank you. Hey there today, fans. Sarah and... <laughs> What's my name again? Oh my God. Carl. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching our YouTube <laughs> channel, though. Subscribe now for more news, special reports and amazing Aussie stories. And Carl misbehaving, Whoa, of course. That never happens. Always happens. What's she talking about?